So if we were to switch, hopefully when, uh, we switch to a voluntary method of funding for the city, that would completely change their incentives because then they actually have to make people happy uh, in order for them to get money out of them, just like the rest of us in business have to. Um, you know, I, I, I don't have an answer for, you know, to boil down your question, trying to figure out how do we deal with Keene State College and the impact on the, on the environment. I mean, I, I went to college, not a Keene State College, but I went to college in a, in a, a city that was a very uh, beautiful city, and they also had concerns about the college kids, and it's just a matter of fact. It, it's here. Deal with it. Um, you know, the fact is, is that there are the, the school continues to build out. I don't know whether the, the, the college has indicated how much more uh, growth they anticipate over the number of, of years, but they continue to take properties off the tax rolls. I know this is a big concern for the city of Keene, but the city of Keene continues to take property off the tax rolls as well. So, um, you know, look in the mirror. Uh, we need to, to focus on the 93 buildings that the city of Keene currently owns and looking at, at getting rid of some of those, looking at some of the properties, getting rid of some of those, working with, with Keene State College to understand what their growth um, um, uh, desires are and how to manage that effectively and, and understand the implications of taking more property off the tax rolls. But if we had a, a clear and concise uh, plan to cut spending and to lower taxes, as Ian had, had uh, mentioned, um, I think that would, would change a lot of things. It would increase property values. It would be more expensive for Keene, to, Keene State College to acquire property, and, uh, and that, that would probably be the best way to stop it. Thank you. Mr. Freeman, you now have the opportunity to ask your opponents a question. I have uh, My first question is just for you, Chris. Um, you had talked earlier about how the city council wasn't authorized, as, uh, as uh, Bob had suggested, to do internet um, collections, I guess. That the state hadn't authorized that, so therefore, you know, it's, it's not within the city's purview to do that kind of thing. How is it then that the city just recently passed, uh, by a 15 to 0 vote, a ban, a, a prohibition on, uh, on synthetic drugs? <coughs> It'll go the same way, I think about six, probably about seven or eight years ago, the um, city passed a ban on um, smoking in restaurants. And what happened was certain people said, you know what, this is not authorized under state constitution. And what they did was they appealed to the state and the state said, sorry, you can't do this. So just because the city ordinance, the city passed an ordinance 15 to zero, if no one appeals it, it stays in effect. Anybody who wants to appeal it to the state saying it's unconstitutional, the state would then take action in all likelihood, unless the law is changed, the state would turn around and say, Keen, your ordinance is illegal and the ordinance would be struck down. Uh, who would like to ask the next question of their two opponents that are here? Yeah, so um, my question is going to come after I just have a clarification so that the online payment system you said that the state was not going to authorize the city to collect electronic payments yeah the state has not done that yet there's there's been a numerous con because people want to do it people want to be able to pay their um, taxes so, on the si so the city of Keene has been doing or the city of Portsmouth has been doing this for at least three years when I notified you the yeah. city council that this was ongoing <coughs> in the in their first year they collected over 5,000 payments. So 5,000, I mean, how, how many days open is the city offices, not including all the half days that they walk away in the summertime, but um, perhaps 240 days a year. Um, that's a lot of transactions that could be avoided uh, having people come and waste gas to go to city hall to pay. So there are third party systems. There are quite a few out there. Yep. Um, they have security, yep. and so why is the city avoiding engaging with that instead of trying to invent the wheel? <clears throat> what this is, okay, Portsmouth, again, I'm Let him have the microphone, please. Oh, sorry. Again, on certain things, certain cities and towns do things, and if people don't complain, they're allowed to continue on doing it. Yes, here in Keene, we've looked at a couple of times at different um, 
people to third parties. And right now, the cost that we're on the third parties are quite high. And what we need to do is we need to get a competitive bid and we need to get the cost down. We need to be able to do the transaction on, online. And it's going to happen. I wish it had already happened, but it's going to happen sooner than later because we had one individual says, I want to pay online because they're paying twelve to 15000 and I want to pay online so I can get the mileage. So people, so they can take trips every two years. But people want it to happen, and, it, and it's going to happen. Like I said, it should have already happened, but it hasn't happened, but it's going to happen. Councilor Roberts, you can now ask a question of uh, Mr. Sutherland and Mr. Freeman. Bring it. Bring it on. <laughs> okay, bring it on. <clears throat> you want to do it while I take one? Okay, yeah, sure. I'll throw one out there. Um, for the both of you. Uh, I earlier proposed returning the Bearcat to Lenko, the manufacturer is just two hours away in Massachusetts, so uh, maybe the police chief could drive it down there personally and uh, give them the keys back. I'm wondering <coughs> how you feel, uh, would you support a proposal like that? And if not, uh, would you propose anything for dealing with this thing that clearly the people of Keene didn't want? And recently in, the, in Concord, uh, the people there made it pretty clear they didn't want it, and the, their city council voted for one too. So obviously, Chris, you voted for it. Uh, would, would you change your mind on that? I went back and forth on the, um, the Bearcat. What changed my mind uh, about the Bearcat wasn't the police chief, it was Chief Lamoureux at the, um, the fire chief because he's the um, emergency coordinator for the Keene and Keene area. And part of the Bearcat, there's other things in the Bearcat that can be used for rescue operations. For example, when we had Hurricane Irene, when a bunch of the roads were washed out and stuff. So that is, that's one of the reasons why I voted for the Bearcat. I have a serious problem, especially now, with policemen who think they're um, <coughs> militia or tactical militia. They're policemen, they're police women. They're not military, they're not soldiers. And if they decide to go as, to try to act as military, I would have no problem sending the um, Bearcat back. Um, my lineage is Scottish, so I'm pretty frugal. Uh, I don't like to give things away as a rule. So I don't know what uh, limitations there are as to how the federal government spent the money on that. I'd be willing to say, um, Concord, you need one, you can have ours. Um, or, uh, I don't know, eBay or auction or, you know, Naughty Pine, somewhere, somewhere the, uh, who's willing to auction for us. I, I think that if we, we can't do this because you're a city, I guess, but if we were to put it on a ballot, I think we'll leave it up to the voters. What do we do with it? If I can just follow up on the Bearcat. Certainly. The Bearcat was a piece of military equipment that was sent to Iraq in 2003 and 2004. And as a combat engineer, it's flat and it's really easy to blow up. And so it was taken out of Iraq. Well, what happened was the people in Lincoln <coughs> had pretty good um, connections with Congress. And so Congress and Homeland Security decided that we were going to save Lincoln and decided to, quote unquote, to give these free bear cats away. But they're not free because there's a little um, clause in that free package. If DEA, DEA or Homeland Security decides that they want to use the Bearcat, they have a right to come in and use the Bearcat anytime they want. So in a lot of ways, the tax, local taxpayers are paying for the Bearcat, basically housing and covering the cost for DEA and Homeland Security. I'd just like to add, uh, Bob, that the reason I suggested giving it back is because I've heard, I don't know if it's true, I've heard there's a prohibition on selling the thing. So, oh, that's you know, I if, I don't know. if we could sell it, I would support the proposal to sell it. Otherwise, just take it back to them. Or just give, send it on over to Congress. Okay. Councilor Roberts, do you have a question for Mr. Sutherland or Mr. Freeman? As I, I've stated earlier, there's um, <coughs> Concord has been downshifting things left and, and right, and it's having a, a negative effect on the local taxpayers. If we pay $5 million, you expect to get something in return. What would you think, how should the city 
publicly react to the continuous downshifting from Concord. So, um, I don't know if you listened to WKBK this morning, we talked a little bit about this. Um, I think, and you and I have talked about this, I think that we have to pretend like the federal government and the state are broke and we're not going to get any money. Let's, let's start from that premise to the day where no money comes from Concord and no money comes from the federal government. So that's where we should be looking at our budgets and building up the things that are essential first and that the revenues that do come from other sources go to the nice to haves, not the need to haves, because when it, otherwise those cuts hurt more if we're not prepared for them to come. So I think the city council should be aware and awake wide eyed the fact that we can expect year after year, and especially as the economy goes down and, and maybe there are less revenues generated from the increased taxes, um, that fewer dollars are headed our way. Uh, I support what, uh, what Bob said there, and I would add to it that I think that we don't need uh, the federal government's money here in Keene. I think that uh, we should keep our money here in Keene rather than sending it to the federal government. As a, a member of the New Hampshire Liberty Party, I support the idea of declaring independence uh, for New Hampshire. Obviously, we're talking about city council positions, so I think that uh, city resolution declaring independence from the federal government would be a nice step toward encouraging Concord to declare independence from the federal government. I want nothing to do with their money because it was uh, stolen from people, and we should be keeping our money and not sending it to them in the first place. If we can encourage Keen, the people of Keene to not send uh, the federal government money, then we can keep more money here in Keene and put it towards the actual community here rather than sending it to be blown up uh, overseas and killing innocent people. So I would propose that uh, Keene declare secession from uh, the federal government and no longer accept any money from them because it always comes with strings attached. Do uh, you want to follow up, Mr. Well, Sutherland? Well, I'm just curious as to how the, the questions go now. Are you going to ask me a question? Uh, whoever wants to ask the next question can ask the next question. All right, I, I, I'm just I'm responding to what Ian just proposed, and um, I don't know if you pay attention to the way the elections go in the city of Keene through recent history, but if uh, Keene were to secede, do you think things would be any better here? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, is so, that a rhetorical question or is that your third question? Uh, well, I'm just saying, you know, if you're if you're going to say let's let's all get on the lifeboat and leave the mothership, are you going to be satisfied, Ian, with the other people who are in the lifeboat with you in the city of Keene? I think the people in this area are generally very nice, uh, nice folks. Um, I am living with them now, so obviously I'm satisfied enough that they're here and I'm here and. Everybody mostly gets along. Well, uh, things change to the way you're just by seceding. Yeah. Well, I think seceding would uh, would give the people of Keene more uh, control over their over their own lives. You know, I don't know what you pay to the federal government, but a lot of people are sending a lot of money to these folks. And what are they doing with it besides you know murdering people and threatening people and coming up with new rules and regulations that they claim you're supposed to know what they are? But how could anybody possibly? know what they are. How can anybody read even the state statutes, let alone federal uh, ordinances or whatever they call them, code, I guess? Uh, there's no benefit uh, that, that we receive from them. They take money from here, they take a huge chunk off the top for themselves, and then maybe they'll return some of it to you. Oh, as long as you jump through their hoops. So I don't see what benefit they provide at all. Uh, people should be keeping their money in the first place, and then they could give that money to local organizations that are doing good work and actually helping the community. Mr. Freeman, you still have one question that you can ask to Councillor Roberts and Mr. Sutherland. Sure, my question is for both of you gentlemen. Um, I proposed ending the enforcement of victimless crimes in Keene. I think that the police resources are obviously very limited, and I'd rather have them investigating real crimes, crimes where there's somebody who's a clear complaining victim, someone whose property's been damaged, someone who's personally be, uh, been harmed by another person's actions. But yet, I'm constantly seeing Keene police out enforcing, you know, uh, as I mentioned earlier tonight, a couple of college girls or young ladies were walking down the street, they weren't harming anybody, they weren't being loud or anything like that, but yet Keene police, uh, you know, shines a flashlight and says, give me that 
and of course they give up their uh, Fourth Amendment right to privacy by handing over their uh, bottles, so they could have probably avoided the encounter, but if the police weren't there doing that in the first place, if they were actually responding to calls for fights or whatever it is that they would be responding to on a Friday night that would be a real uh, crime, I guess my question is, you know, what, would you support uh, ending and to what extent, what, you know, what specifically, if anything, like for me, I want to end all victimless crime enforcement, but anything in specific that uh, is upsetting to you that you'd like to see the police uh, not focus on anymore? Before I give a, a, a quick answer to that one, both to your, your, both your earlier questions, between the school board and the city, we get about $60 million, quote unquote, from, from other sources. And basically about 50% of the school board's budget and the city council's budget is, quote, it's other sources. Yes, it's our taxes, but other sources. Yes, on victimless crime, about three years ago, I was one of the individuals on the city council to vote for um, sending a resolution to the state house to basically decriminalize um, marijuana because we spend a lot of time and money and resources on, the, on marijuana. And with the marijuana is, sometimes the police officer will say, no big deal. Sometimes the police officer will give you a citation. Sometimes the police officer um, would arrest you. <coughs> three different police officers and three different occasions, you have no idea what's going to happen. <clears throat> and yes, there's other victimless crimes I would want to, to get rid of, but it all comes down to res 